Hi there, this is uh, Koiru with another video and I normally had said that in the start of every video that this will be a short one and this will actually be shorter than the last 2-3 videos at least. And the reason for that is that I kind of come to a, a halt with the fault finding on the Euro PC and I do have to do some other projects and a lot of traveling in the near future so I do think it will be better to prepare a couple of shorter videos that might will fetch your uh, interest when I'm out uh, traveling and will not be able to make these uh, longer in-depth videos but we will do the full focus on the um, Euro PC as soon as I'm back in the middle of October so until then I don't think I will post more videos than this about that system. I do have some plans for some shorter videos and I might do something that's uh, septendi but this time it's about continuing where we left off in the last uh, video and we did leave the Euro PC with no picture and no life at all as it seemed but we did have a working power supply and we did have a monitor with a power light and the high voltage but no picture. So that is where we are going to continue today. Hope you enjoy this. Yes, we are back in the shed and this time we are going to test the components that we know that we are fault finding on the right thing. And the first thing I'm going to test is this uh, monitor. And for that I'm going to uh, call on an old friend. And it is the month of, of September. So I was thinking of using this. This is my uh, Tandy 1400 personal computer LT that I fixed the floppy drives and some other stuff in last year's uh, September video. And I'm going to hook this up to a power supply. And this one has a center positive power. So I'm going to just connect some lead here. Here I have mismatched the wires from my power supply and I hook this up like so. And this is the connector from my Schneider monitor. And oh yeah, I have to take this lid and open it. This covers all the plugs on the back like so and there also is a sliding switch here that tells if its monitor is external or internal I will just slide that monitor on off like so then we should be good to go this is on now and I have high voltage I don't have a three and a quarter inch 70 kilobyte floppy drive but that's okay because you should be getting something on the display anyway yes and I don't know if you can see this I will try to um, to zoom in on the camera yeah but here you can see that it's actually booting and that this monitor is working and it's giving a, a typical CGA-ish look on the, the screen so this monitor is working and I'm going to disconnect now the, the Tandy. I'm going to use the Tandy for another video now in, in September. But for the moment I'm going to just disconnect it. It comes disket removal or disket drive not ready. But that will be the content for another day. So now it's about tidying up and do some more tests on the Euro PC motherboard that we have in front of us here. And this is where we left this off last time. I do have the monitor here that we just tested. That's okay. And we have the monitor input here. Like so. And we have the power connector input like so. And we do have the power switch like so. And this should be what we need to get a picture on the screen, but it appears totally dead.
but the main purpose of what I'm doing here today is yeah, I can I can also check here the by the multimeter to see that we have five volt on something and I can check this 74 244 logic ship it should have five volt and there is absolutely nothing not a single volt and this is strange because we did measure the power supply last time and it was working 100 percent no issue at all to be absolutely sure i measure again and i also measure on other parts of the board with the same result This was kind of a surprise, I, I get no power nowhere on this and we did measure 5 volt here last time so I'm going to take the power supply and take it apart again and check if the fuse is blown again. And it is blown again. Of course that's not a good sign. But I'm do going to change it again. It's really blown. So it was a short circuit that made this blow. It can be capacitors it can be some some other stuff but i am not betting anything on it so i'm still putting a fuse of the same size the input leads is a bit in the way so i have to fiddle a bit to get this in like so i'm not bothering to to um really screw this in, in place again I'm just going to cover it up slightly and I'm going to try again and it's off and let's see if we have voltage now So the fuse blew again that means that we have a different fault from last time we do have something that makes the fuse blow the fuse did blow at once so this is not good there is some totally new fault on this board I do have to test again by disconnecting this and of course changing the fuse again like so and since the fuse blew at once I'm going to replace it with a 400 milliamp fuse that's slightly bigger but then I know if it's just some components just slightly out of spec that only draws a little more power and makes the fuse blow and try to connect this without anything connected in here and just a final check to see if there's nothing under the motherboard that's shorting it out then this should not turn on and I have to make a dummy to turn this power supply on with mimicking this switch but for now we test it with the output circuit turned off and no power switch connected yeah the fuse blew without me doing anything so no there is a fault in this power supply and that is probably a bad capacitor yeah of course that's not good but I have to address this as it is so that means that I'm one step further away from from testing this when we think in the normal terms of things but we do have an option that I'm going to do but it will take some preparation and this board it does have 
minus 12 volt plus 12 volt and 5 volt but I do think that the minus 12 and plus 12 volt is only for the um, serial port RS222 V24 voltage so I am going to take a Commodore 64 plug and find out where I inject 5 volt and I'm going to do just that and I'm going to leave the power supply as another project if I can get one step further testing this actually I'm not bothering to measure out this because I can see here the L1 that is a, a component that's meant to be an inductor or drossel that stands after the power injector but here I can see it's just jumpered so this L1 is the 5 volt line and the earth or ground I can find anywhere around this board so what I will do is just connect two leads and connect this to 5 volt and see where that takes me yeah, I found this contraption here that I'm going to use. This has 4mm banana sockets in this end and just loose wires in this end. So I'm just going to um, to solder this in on, on the board and what I do for ground, I'm not sure. I might just use one of those down here. This is actually one mega ohm. And if I I have to check with this is ground on a 74 chip and this ground. Yeah, it's actually one mega ohm. <laughs> so that I can't use. But I can use the one around here, zero. So I'm just going to scrape away some solder mask here and I'm going to solder it in. To the ground plane here on the side. Yeah, I'm just thinning the surface good so that I'm sure that this will be a good solid solder. Because of the corrosion and stuff on this board, I have to take some extra precautions. Yeah, that will give me contact, I think. And on this wire here. And after thinning the L1 wire, I just solder this lead in place and I'm going to use the blue as the positive 5 volt line as this was already marked red on both sides from the last project I used this in and the brown wire is going to be the ground connection and just to be sure I'm going to measure down through the power supply because inside here we have the red wire that was 5 volt and if I connect this to this one here and zero ohm and this one to the black one here and zero ohm yes so this is a good connection for yeah doing some power injection uh, into this uh, motherboard I will be using my bench power supply sorry I'm not able to get that on, on film but I have to do some adjustment on this first and if I here I have the blue wire should be minus and this should be plus yeah 5.14 volt And then I have injected power into this board, so we should be able to measure 5 volts now over the 74 chips. Yeah, 4.78 volt, a bit low, and we have quite the high current draw. It draws more than 1 amp, so there probably are something that's getting hot now on this board. This bus driver here, this 74245, is the halted chip on the board just now. It's 30 degrees and it's increasing. The same with this bus driver, it's also getting hot. 
that could mean that there is some short on the bus of course all the other chips are running quite cool the CPU is running quite hot but that's quite normal if it's running something and this ship also the Faraday chipset it's also not running very hot and this is the bus driver for the RS232 and that of course should not run warm because we are missing the plus minus 12 volt so this is 32 still heating this is 31 Yeah, but nothing overly hot, but these two is noticeably hotter than much else. But as you can see, we're getting nothing on screen, so at least we don't have a picture of any kind. But I can measure to see that we have 5 volt on this side of the board. Yeah, 4.79. It's dropped a bit, 4.81 because of, of the power draw I have 1.13 ampere nothing has catched fire at least and I am going to do uh, one thing I'm going to, to disconnect this now I've uh, disconnected the power I do have my diagnostic card and this is a, a common run of the mill card I did have a, a better card back in the day that was made with some more discrete logic but this is one of the Chinese ones and they're working quite good and, and this card I do have a problem with because I had this lying on top of a drawer and somebody slammed the drawer so they ripped the speaker off or the speaker is not a speaker it's a buster so I don't have a buster in here but I can add one or I can add some diode or, or something for this and, and this card should be pointed towards the rear and towards the rear of my ISO slot should be here and this should be the front so I'm going to try to connect this should fit in like so and let's try to turn this on again and if you are able to see this you will see that we don't have any post code it doesn't enter post at all it's standing here with these minuses here and we have the clock light the RDE light ready is ticking the frame light plus 5 volt the minus for 12 volt and 12 volt of course is not lighting up it's try to spell end when I pushed the reset switch since the post ended in an end command I don't know anything about I will do a power recycle and check out if things starts but it still won't post and I'll just do a quick temperature check to see that nothing is burning hot yeah, it does not try to post at all. So my next step will be to try to check out the clock. And we do have several clocks, but of course the main clock to check is the one that's connected here to the CPU and to the chipset. And that's this one. And you also have a clock here that's connected to the floppy drive. And there should be some other clocks. You have one here that's connected to the serial ports and IO chips. You do have a, a clock here, that's the real-time clock, 32 kilohertz crystal. And I do seem to remember that I saw two more crystals when I looked to the schematics. We have one, two, three, four. That might be some of the other ships. Hmm, pretty strange. This power switch should not affect anything at all now because this was just connected the leads into the power supply. Here in my shed I have my analog scope. I don't have any way to uh, to store what's on the scope, but I do of course have a, a way to film that, but that's not very easy on low frequencies, but of course on high frequency it should give a uh, yeah, okay picture. You can check on the memory chips to see if there is any action. And I'm very sorry to say I must have knocked my camera out of position before I sat down here because you can only see half the scope screen on the end of my desk here. It should have been the whole screen. Sorry for that. Nothing on the memory chips. I was testing the ROS line and I'm going to test the cost line on this. It's prominently high. 
and there's nothing on the data lines. Normally I would start on the CPU and try to measure out that and I kind of did that this time too. I measured the reset line that it was working as it should. It went from low to high and back to low again. But now it's time to properly test all the signals around the CPU. 19 should be the clock on the 8081 and this is a 40 pin chip so it should be this one. And here we do have clock, almost it's outside of what my scope can handle, but that's okay. The address lines and the data lines all appears to be dead, no signals at all. So I decided I want to test the reset signal again, and that's pin 21, and pin 21 is again high. And I measured this earlier, that it had a proper reset, it went from low to high, and back to low again, but now it's stuck high. And this is something that haunts me for the rest of this session. Sometimes the CPU seems to be running and sometimes it appears to just being hung in reset and that happens randomly. So the system is not entirely stable to put it at least. And we did identify that the reset, among other things, came out of the um, keyboard controller chip. Yes, and the reset signal that comes out of the keyboard controller, I will try to document it a bit here. And this is from the, the schematic. And you can see here that this comes from port B, pin 4, on the um, 68 uh, something keyboard controller chip. There are some, both used the um, designation 6805 and 6811 as this controller, but all these chips in this series are mostly compatible with, with each other. But what you can see here is that this chip has a pull up to 5 volt, so that means that this will be normally high. And when this is high, this transistor is leading and pulling this low. So this is an inverter as it is uh, working in this circuit. And that means that when this pin goes low, this will go high and make a reset, and after that it will go low again on the reset signal. So if this program is running properly on the keyboard controller, and that gets all its proper inputs, then this should probably make a pulse for four clock cycles or something. At least four clock cycles uh, is the reset period for the 8088. And as we see here, the normal is that this line should be low. But that's not happening all the time, and that makes me suspect the keyboard controller. But it's just one way to test this, and that is by disconnecting the reset signal on the CPU and make a manual reset to see how that works for the CPU. But the problem is that around these schematics there are a lot of reset signals and every ship needs to be reset and that's the keyboard controller of course, the main CPU, we have the chipset, we have the video controller and we have the gym ship. All of those have some reset circuitry that's around this ship so this might be a wild goose chase but at least we can make one thing for sure and that is we can't make this system running if we have some uncertainty in the reset circuit. So the first thing I have to make sure is that the reset is working. And we can try by disconnecting the keyboard controller and do manual resets and stuff to see if we can get something to, uh, to boot. And it's also so that if we push this reset, it doesn't matter. If I try to pull this reset low, I'm not sure what happens. But I can pull this low via a resistor and see if it's dragged very high. No, it runs pretty high by itself. I tried to drag it low by a, a 1k uh, resistor and it's, it's not working. I've done some measurement now and my big problem is that sometimes the data and address bursts on the CPU seems to work fine. And in some cases the reset on the CPU is stuck high and it doesn't work the same way each time I, I turn this on. And of course that's um, a problem when you do fault finding. 
So I'm not really sure what the next step should be, but I probably would have to measure out some more of the VIOS around the, the CPU and its keyboard controller chip. That's not the work I'm looking forward to, but I'm going to use my sharp tipped measurement leads and, and see if I can just punch through or measure from leg to leg on the ICs. To make sure that it was not my old analog scope that was making havoc with my measurements, I did retry all the measurements with the scope fluke meter, but at this time I couldn't actually get the bus working at all. Earlier it was so that every other time or so I turned this on I would get some signals on the data and address bus, but now it seemed totally dead. So that the reset was always pulling high when I was measuring this time. But it was good to see that the scope meter actually behaved well on film today and that the display was quite readable. And I'm going to do some more manual fault finding by measuring out a lot of the connections between the um, ICs of this board. And that will be a work I do off camera. So that will be it. This was a somewhat shorter episode than um, what we had before in this series. But finding out of a break in one of the vias on this board is a very time consuming task. I have to make some schematics where I cross off each line that I measure out and works so that I don't oversee something. And I also will need to measure out, I have measured this crystal, it oscillates, I measured the crystal for the uh, floppy controller, it operates. This is getting clock, this is an, has an external oscillator circuit. So I do know that something of this is trying to start. So that is where we leave this uh, Schneider PC for part 3 in this uh, series. Hope you enjoyed the content. Please hit like and subscribe if you want to be notified when we continue this uh, series. So, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.